Deputy Governor of Undo State, Agbola Ajayi, said the, that Governor Uluwarotimi Akaredolu has 21 days to hand over power to him or the constitution would be invoked. Governor Akaredolu, who is currently receiving treatment for COVID-19, had vowed that he would not hand over power to his deputy in acting capacity. Speaking to his Commissioner for Information and Orientation, Donad Ojogo, Akaredolu said his deputy was the greatest threat to his administration and has since left the ruling All Progressive Congress, ABC. But the deputy governor said it was ignorance for Governor Akiridolu to have said he wouldn't hand over running of government to him because of political differences. The deputy governor, who spoke through his media aide, Alien Shaware, said Section 190, subsection 2 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended, was opposite in this circumstances, even as he continues to pray for Akiridolu's quickest recovery. Joining us now for some clarity on the constitutional provision of this matter, we have the former Vice President of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mande Ubani. Thank you for joining us on the news. My pleasure. Good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, what is the significance of the 21-day threat issued to Governor Akira Duluba, his deputy, to hand over power? Yeah, we must uh, place the constitution in a proper perspective. Uh, the constitution says... If the governor is proceeding on any vacation or he is otherwise unable, he is otherwise unable to act as a governor of that state, the law says, the constitution says he has to uh, transmit uh, to the speaker the issue of resolution that this, his deputy should be acting on his behalf until he resumes. But if he fails to do that, uh, within 21 days, there will be a resolution of the House that now empowers the deputy now to begin to act as a as a governor of the state. Uh, so the issue we need to deal with first is, is the governor unable to act as a governor? If that is determined, then you now begin to talk about the provisions of the Constitution being applicable. But if the governor is able, even though he's sick, he's able uh, then you cannot now begin to talk about handing over to a deputy. So that has to be determined first in the first place. So the governor says, yes, I have COVID-19, uh, I have the pandemic, I mean, uh, the virus, but I'm able, I'm capable, I, I can still run the, the state apparatus. They remember also that this deputy is no longer a member of the same political party with which they came into power. He recently becamed to another political party. Unless Jesus... Uh, that we hand over to a, a person that is no longer in the same political party with you, especially in an election year, in which is even rumored that this is deputy is likely going to be the candidate of another political party during this election. It's only Jesus that can do that. Humanly speaking, Nigerian politicians do not even hand over to their deputy when they are in the same political party, let alone when you have uh, political differences. So what, what would you, in reality, um, attribute the deputy's request and um, almost ultimatum of a 21-day um, period, knowing that the likelihood of him taking that position um, is very slim? Yes, the deputy is playing politics. He's an intelligent man. <laughs> so he wants to probably evoke the sentiment of the people and all that. But I have established one thing. Has it been proven uh, that the governor is unable to act? That is very important. And then how is he sure that after 21 days that he will have a pliant uh, legislators that will now probably pass a resolution in his favor? Because that resolution has to be passed, you know, empowering him to act. If there is no resolution of the House, if he doesn't have a very compliant House that would pass that resolution, empowering him to act, then he is talking uh, just politics because he will not in any way be empowered to act if there is no resolution. So two things. Has he been able to establish that the governor is unable to act? Will he be able to have a pliant house that will be able to pass a resolution in his favor, asking him now to now be the deputy governor, I mean, to be the acting governor in, in, after 21 days. If he cannot in any way establish those two factors, then I'm sorry, he's only playing politics and cannot get away, get away with it. 
All right, let's uh, look at other climbs, for instance. We know that um, in UK, um, when uh, Boris Johnson had a bit of a situation, he did hand over temporarily uh, to someone to take over the realm of uh, governance. And with the constitution that has been cited, what are his chances, in spite of you know, the question of him being able, uh, uh, whether the governor is able or not, um, of uh, coming through? Yeah, in Senate, in Senate climb, uh, those people obey their laws. They operate their constitution in strict obedience to whatever the tenets are. But here, we have we have problem. We have problem with people obeying our laws, complying with our rules and regulation. I am saying here, since 1999 to date, it's only few governors that have actually willingly handed over to their deputy when even when they are from the same political party it's only few governors that have complied with the law most times when those governors are going on vacation or proceeding on medical uh, leave they hand over some time to their chief of staff we know you know in a manner that you may not be uh, uh expressed but you know that it is the chief of staff that may be temporarily acting on behalf of the governor until he comes back most of them they are so afraid of their deputies i'm talking about 1999 today it's only few governors even the president the current president is only few times they have handed over to his uh, uh to his advice many times now he has not done that over time and they decided that he has to wait over to up to 21 days so what i'm trying to say is that over here we don't respect our rules we don't respect our laws our leaders, our elites, always observe our laws in bridge. Then in now, in a situation where you now have a deputy or a vice, who is no longer with you in the same political party, who has now joined a different political party, handing over to him in an election year, is clearly, clearly uh, uh, pronouncing a death sentence on you. He may take some decisions that will actually, you know, make you uh, coming back to be a governor Practically impossible. He can sign some documents. He can do many things that will really make kill, kill you politically. So I, 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 I will not be, if I'm a, an advisor to, to Akare Dolu, I'm sorry to, sorry, I'm sorry to say this as a lawyer. I would not advise him to hand over to a, a man who is no longer with him in the same political party. Uh, you know, in an election, election year, it is clearly, clearly pronouncing a death sentence on him. Because any decision can be taken that will really make it impossible for him to win this election. He can do anything with, with those times so he's going to act as, his gov as a governor. Uh, I guess, I guess the, the point, actually, this whole argument will become mute in 14 days. Because we know, first, the governor is asymptomatic. And second, it is 14 days isolation. So before that 21 days come... Uh, the governor might test a negative and all this conversation will become null. Thank you very well, much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You wanted pleasure. to say something yes. quickly? Yes. Yeah, yes. As I said earlier, the man says he's able. He still says I'm able, even though I am, I am in isolation. I am, you know, but I'm asymptomatic. I can still perform my function as a governor. There is nothing that has incapacitated me because incapacity is also very key. If the man has not been capacitated, even by virtue of the pandemic, I mean, by the virus, then you cannot even begin to invoke the provision of that constitution. All right, thank it's very, you very important much. that he's unable, unable, that word unable to act is important. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Obani, for your time on the news. We appreciate it. My, my pleasure.